Steve here with Krista. Krista is our training director in Sparks at the Fitness for 10. Thanks for being here, Krista. Thank you. I'm excited to be here with you. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about things that, and, and this is mostly opinion, some of it's factual. <laughs> Let's, we're going to talk about some of the things that we've seen that people do wrong or mistakes that they make in the gym. Now, I always say, you know, if you have a reason for what you're doing, it's okay, it, it might not be wrong. But um, people may have a reason for a cheat rep, you know, doing cheat, you know, cheating in the reps. Those are usually really advanced lifters. That's not a beginner or an intermediate lift. Don't be cheating. You know, you're not to that level yet where you can do wrong stuff and count it right, you know. So um, the, the thing that comes to mind, and we'll see the first thing that comes to your mind, one of the first things that comes to mind for me, kind of related to what I just said, is people pushing, they're chasing weight. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that when they're chasing weight is they're using more weight than what is beneficial for their exercise program. Mm -hmm. You know, they they can't get the right range of motion and it's okay. People do partial range of motions, but you still don't need to chase weight. And I think part of the reason that this happens is um, people see other people lifting more weight than they are. Mm -hmm. This is not a competition with other people. It's a competition with yourself. Yep. And, um, you know, I've, I've been doing this since I was in my teens and I don't, you know, my intensity level is lower. I don't lift heavy. I can lift heavier, but I don't because I want to maintain my health and I can still get a good workout and work my body with a little lower intensity level, I do it by increasing my volume. So I may do more sets and leave, you know, four or five reps in the tank. What does that mean? I could have done five more reps pretty easy, but I'm not going to. Thanks. So, um, or sometimes even more, but I'm not going to. So that's one of the biggest mistakes I see, especially older people and younger people mm -hmm. chasing weight using more weight than what is a benefit to them. So what's something that comes to your mind, Krista? I think that's a great point. And especially too, like you said, I'm in competition with myself. I am not in competition with anybody else. And I think with that being said too, if you're watching somebody and you're like, oh, they're not pushing enough weight or, oh, they're, they're just using really, really light weights, don't make any of the assumptions either, right? Um, for me, I had a labrum tear, so I don't have a good range of motion in my shoulders. So when I do push-ups, they're not as deep as I'd like them to go, but I'm still going to push myself and do the best push-ups that I can while maintaining that correct form. Same with, like you were talking about, pushing that weight. If the weight is so heavy that you're compromising your movement patterns, you're just going to hurt yourself. You're just going to end up with an injury. Like you said, it's a competition with ourselves. So today I'm going to come in and I'm going to lift, say that 12 pounds, you know, weight. And now I'm going to be like, okay, well, I could get to, you know, 12 reps easy or 15 reps easy. Okay. So tomorrow switch it to the 15 rep, you know, 15 pounds. And you do that gradually, but you do it based on you, not based on, you know, Joe over here, who's, you know, lifting the 50 because he may have been doing that for years upon years and may not have an injury that he's compensating for or anything of that nature. Um, so I, I do see that. But then I also see people like you were talking about too, is like, I'm using a lighter weight. Why am I using that lighter weight? What are my goals? What does that look like? So I think that there's that point where you have to have that, that conversation within yourself as to, am I pushing myself? Am I at you know, a six, seven, eight level by the end of my set? Or am I still at a two just kind of doing this and dancing around at the same time? Am I being efficient in my workout? Right. So what you just said there is the opposite. Someone might not have enough intensity. Your intensity is too low. If your intensity is too low, you're not doing anything. Nope. 
you know, and you mentioned something before we, we turned the recording on too, or we, or we were talking about, you know, there's, there's little things that you learn as you grow and as you're in the gym. And we want to encourage people to get into the gym because it's such a positive place. Mm -hmm. I was up there in your gym a couple of weeks ago and I just noticed you have a really, in, in the gym there where you are, it feels good in that gym. And I've been in a lot of gyms and they all have their own kind of character, but it feels really good in there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like people are laughing and talking and that starts with the leadership with you and the general manager um, mm -hmm. by your attitudes and people are laughing and smiling and it's a happy place, you know, mm -hmm. and that always makes it nice, but kind of rabbit trail there. But, you know, we were talking about another thing that simple thing that you don't do is don't stand right in front of the dumbbell rack. <laughs> How come you don't stand right in front of the dumbbell rack? Because you're blocking the space. People can't yeah. walk by and grab the dumbbells off. So you take the dumbbells and you back up. It's okay to be in front of a mirror, but don't block equipment. And, you know, what I mean by don't block equipment is don't go stand right in, in the middle of the power rack yeah. and do something that has nothing to do with the power rack because you just took out a piece of equipment, the power mm -hmm. rack mm -hmm. um, or the squat rack when you're not using it. But there's yeah. a mirror there. Yeah, but there's a mirror right over there too. Stand in front of that mirror and yeah. don't stand too close to where people can't walk by and grab dumbbells. Your thoughts? That's, no, it's true. Like, and it comes down to spatial awareness. Absolutely. So if I'm standing too close to somebody and I'm going to do a lateral raise, I don't want to be punching somebody because I'm so close to this person. So you have to have that spatial awareness. You have to be aware of other people as well. You might have your headphones on. You might be in your own world. You might be going through all the list of things you have to do as soon as you leave the gym, but you still have to have that etiquette and that awareness of, okay, yes, like you said, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to use the squat rack and I'm going to be doing some random exercise that has nothing to do with it, but I feel comfortable in my little space here. That's taken away from somebody else who actually has a reason to be there using that squat rack. Or, um, you know, I've seen where I go to use a bench and somebody's using that bench as their personal locker space, right? <laughs> You're like, there's only one bench available, but I've got to compete now with somebody's sweatshirt, water bottle, phone, um, selfie stick, you know, and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, this doesn't work. Again, that spatial awareness and that physical, you know, taking responsibility for yourself in that space is a huge thing. You have to be aware of respecting other people. Yeah, I think if you just practice thinking about other people in the gym, mm -hmm. that will help you follow the etiquette of, of the rules of the gym mm -hmm. etiquette. You know, just think about, okay, that person might need to walk by here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to do my exercise here. I'm going to move, I'm going to move back or I'm going to move mm -hmm. over. Um, <laughs> And think about the needs and what other people are trying to do. When you do yeah. that, that will help you um, be in the gym and everything will be cohesive where everyone can do what they need to do instead of being in your own world and thinking that, um, you know, you get this huge space, you know, and mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm using four machines all at once. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What? Yeah. Right. No, don't touch that. You know, I'm, I'm using all four of these and that would be okay. If you have three people you're working out with where you're rotating, you got four people, four machines, yeah. but not one person, four machines, mm -mm. Mm -mm. you know? No, so. no. That's just like re-racking your weights, right? Why that's so important. So, and I've seen that too, you know, where like I'm training a client, I go over to the leg press. Well, guess what? There's, you know, 300 pounds of weight on the leg press, but I'm getting ready to train somebody who's six years old, who's never been in the gym. Now I have to go and take all of that away and make sure that this person's now set up. If I don't want to walk into a machine that's all loaded, why would you leave it like that? Right? That's another thing. You know, again, it's really that personal responsibility. This is your home away from home to clean up, take care of it and show up in a respectful manner. I've done some short videos on things not to do. 
And that's one of the most popular ones, but it's the one mm-hmm. every single day. This happens yep. in the gym multiple yep. times. And okay, so you got, you've got a rack of weights and, and there's somebody puts a 10 pounder on there. Mm-hmm. And then someone's going to cover that up with a 45 pound <laughs> plate. And then another 45 pound plate. Right. And then a 35 pound plate. Yeah. And then a 25 pound plate. Okay, so if I want that 35 pound plate, I have to take the 25 off, mm-hmm. then grab the 35. Then what you, if you're doing it correctly, you're going to, well, you took the 25 pound off. You might as well help everyone and put it where it goes, where right. it is on the rack with the 25s. But what about the 10 pound weight that's buried under there? Mm-hmm. That maybe someone who's not as strong wants it and that's a struggle to take off all those 45 yeah. pound weights just to get to the 10 pound weight Absolutely. that they want to put on the bar. That is probably um, owner's biggest pet peeve, but also yeah. members. Mm-hmm. Definitely one of their biggest pet peeves is not stacking the weights correctly. And yeah. as I've done some of the shorts, you know, I've asked questions, is this how it's supposed to be done? And people will say, you know, you do it like this. You know, I've been in the gym for 45 years. And so I take for granted sometimes that people know how to re-rack the weight when they Mm -hmm. don't. It's not about, it's not a Christmas tree. It's not a 45, a 35, a 25, a 10. No, that's not how you rack it correctly. That might look pretty, but that's not how you rack weights. So 45s go with 45s, 25s go with 25s. And there's uh, weight trees Mm -hmm. and um, 45s go with 45s and 35s go with 35s so that people can get what they want and you leave the bar empty. You don't leave weights on it. Not even a 10 pound weight. Mm -mm. You know, everyone can do. Yeah, but they have to clean up after you. (laughs) Your mother doesn't live here. (laughs) Yeah. That's something that annoys gym members. And, Absolutely. You know, they never get mad when I make those shorts, but you always have the person like, hopefully they're not in our gyms, but I'm not doing that. Clean it up yourself. You messed it up. You messed it up. No, absolutely. You know, I remember in total side note, camping as a kid, right? You go camping and I was always raised wherever you go camping. When you leave, you leave the campsite better than you found it. When you come to the gym, clean up, leave it a little bit better than what you found it because the next person's going to come in. They're not going to have to waste time cleaning up messes, trying to find their weights. Like you said, if we've got them stacked a certain way, somebody might not be able to move those. And now they're missing out on, you know, an exercise that could be potentially life changing for them. They might be, you know, in a rehab situation. So maybe picking up that 45 pound plate is completely out of their capabilities, but now they're stuck. And now they may just walk away. So it, again, it is, it's that personal responsibility of the space that you're in and that respect to other people. And, and, and it happens, you know, you see people in your gym all the time. The the people are cleaning up the weights, right? Mm-hmm. Re-racking them, putting them yeah. back where they're supposed to go. And it happens because some people are lazy and they just don't care and they're selfish. Yep. Um, that's, that's a big one. They're lazy. They mm-hmm. don't care. And they're just selfish. They're yeah. just all about me. And it's, it's easier. For, I'm not going to walk it back where it goes. And then there is some that people just don't know. They yeah. don't know how Absolutely. to make it right. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's a big one right there. Yeah. So any last things you can think of before we, we go, Krista? Oh, let's see. Things not to do, huh? I don't know. There could be a long list of things, but I do. I really think the start of it is that personal responsibility and being cognizant of everybody else around you. Everybody that comes to the gym is working on themselves. Whether at first it's a physical thing, it becomes an emotional thing. It becomes a mental thing. And I had a conversation with a client last night. I'm like, if you haven't cried on the treadmill or the cardio machine, like, have you really been to the gym? <laughs> like, because it does become that space and it becomes 
that lifeblood for some people. And like you said, in our club, we have an amazing atmosphere because people are like, dude, you totally put up that weight. Good job. Or, hey, I saw you struggling through that, but you pushed through it. Nicely done. That becomes the lifeblood of it. And that's why being responsible, being respectful, showing up, having kind of that correct etiquette as well as the correct attitude makes it such an incredible experience for everybody involved. Yeah. And the, the, you know, it is, the gyms are a great place and I don't want to make it sound like there's jerks in the gyms because there's some, there's but some. it's, it's, it's rare. And right. uh, yeah. And it just, it's a, it's a friendly place. I saw a guy in the gym. I mean, he was f farther away, so I, I didn't go out of my way, but if I would have been closer, this guy was obese, mm -hmm. but he was in the gym working out. Yeah. I and mean, he was really obese. Yeah. And I just wanted to say to him, you know what? You are an inspiration. Keep going, brother. You know, yeah. keep doing what you're doing because you're yeah. an inspiration. Don't give up. And that's the yeah. kind of stuff that you get in the gym. Absolutely. Absolutely. I do that, you know, even with my clients, you know, like, okay, we're going to do 12 push ups. And by, you know, the fifth one, we're struggling. I'm like, all right, I'm doing them with you. Let's count this out together. And I think that that goes not just as a trainer, but just as somebody who's in the gym, right? You see somebody who might be doing a move that could be similar or not even close to what you're doing, but you see them kind of pushing through, step up, like be a part of that moment for them because you never know whose life you're going to change just by being that good, decent human being. For sure. Everybody got to get in the gym. It's a great place. Mm -hmm. So uh, Krista, so if somebody wants to follow you on social media, what you're on Instagram, where are you? I'm on Instagram and my Instagram handle is at, um, at it's coach Krista. Um, so pretty straightforward and yeah, I have some content up there. I'm working on putting on some better content, more uh, educational content. So, well, you got some funny stuff on there. I've seen some of that. <laughs> the coffee, <laughs> coffee talk. <laughs> coffee talk. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. There's certain things I don't go without and that's coffee and chocolate. So those are my vices and I will let that ride. <laughs> All right. So you guys go check her out on Instagram. Krista, thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. All right. See you later. Thank you, Steve.